Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and I'd like to show you some of the excellent ways that Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro can work together. This is by no means a complete overview, but it will give you a really good idea of how great the partnership is between these two apps. Let's choose File, New, Photoshop File, and it automatically takes on the size dimensions of the current sequence. I'll click OK, and we'll just give this a name. in this case shot one and I'll click save and it opens up now this is about right and let's just switch this over to the standard essentials workspace and what you see here is a video sized document with the safe title guides in place I'll now choose file place and I can navigate to a raw file that I want to use let's just grab this one here and I'll click place it brings up the Adobe camera Raw dialog now there's lots you could do here but essentially you're developing the photo and a raw file is ideal because it has a much wider range so I could tweak the exposure put in a little bit of contrast recover some of the brighter highlight areas lift up some of the shadows and I'll put a little bit of color in here with vibrance that's looking really good and I can go ahead and double check here at the bottom that I've got the smart objects option selected so when I click OK it places it into the document now you'll hold down shift and option or shift and alt to scale from the center that looks great and press return and it will add it in close save it'll go ahead and overwrite and when you switch back to Premiere Pro, there's the file. You'll see it's right inside your timeline. Now if you need to make a change, just select the layer, press Command E, and Photoshop will reopen. In this case, it's an embedded RAW file from the Smart Object, so a quick double click will open that up, where I could tweak things, like open up the exposure a bit, knock down the highlights a little more, take the overall clarity up, and when I click OK, you'll see that it updates. I choose File Save and switch over to Premiere, and it updates there as well. So that's a really fluid exchange between the two apps. Let's do another image here. File New, Photoshop File. Click OK. Navigate to my folder and I'll call this shot 2 and let's place in the file we want to work with file place now this particular image has some lens correction issues so I'll hit place and it drops it in I can go ahead and adjust the overall exposure I'm gonna put some vibrance in to really bring out the sky let's lift up those highlights that's looking pretty good I'm going to bring the shadows up a little more. And as I do that, I think I'll go the opposite direction with highlights to knock them down. A little bit of clarity, and it's looking pretty good. Now, over a couple of tabs is the lens correction option. And what I'm going to do here is turn it on. And if necessary, you might have to tell it a bit about the type of camera you were shooting with. Now, in this case, I had a Nikon and I'll play with the type of lens that I had and you see it begins to fix some of that distortion you can also manually adjust here as needed to try to correct now that's looking pretty good but not perfect but I definitely made it better I'll click OK to add that in and in a second I'm gonna take advantage of a new filter in Photoshop CS6 called adaptive wide angle this photo has a lot of distortion because of the angle in which it was taken. The camera who's using a very wide lens, which led to some skewing. I can now choose Filter, Adaptive Wide Angle. And what I'm going to want to do is draw some straight lines to define parts of the image that should be straight. Let's start here with this center wall. Click and drag, and if I shift click, it'll force that to be straight here we go that's starting to work 
And what I'm trying to do here is just get the image straightened out a bit. Now this is pretty extreme on these steps, so I'm going to click and drag through and start to rotate that. And you see how you can go through there and begin to correct for some of the errors. Now if you need to, you can drag more, but this is working nicely. There we go. Let's come on over here to the left edge and do a little bit of pinning on this side. And I'm going to go across the top here. And you see how some of that distortion is removed. This tool does a nice job of recognizing edges. And you can always drag the handles manually to start to correct for issues. Let's shift click there and make that perpendicular. Same for that edge. And you see it's doing a pretty good job. Now this is a tough edge here, so I may have to pull that in a bit. There we go. Now if it's too much, we can tweak that, but it's doing a nice job here. There we go. So as you see, a lot of controls to be had. And this is just one of many filters in Photoshop, but this adaptive wide angle goes a long way for fixing issues, especially if you have distortion. And as I just define my objects here, notice how it selectively warps the details and really starts to pull things out. You can go ahead and click on these lines and just rotate, and when you get the green update, that's Photoshop's way of indicating that it thinks it's fixed the distortion. If you see red, you really should go through and start to tweak until you've cleaned that up. Now if we toggle that off and on, you see quite a bit of distortion has been corrected, and it's really up to you how you process. I'll choose OK, and it's going to update. Because this is a smart object, I could press Command-T for free transform, and just scale it up a bit more. There we go, the filters will redraw. If I need to, I could double click on that filter and jump in it. And this even has its own scale slider, making it easier to mag up the image a bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. And you see how all those tie together, giving you flexibility. Remember, everything's non-destructive too. So if necessary, you could jump in and make those tweaks. And I think you'll find it's a pretty cool effect. Since that's not big enough, I'm just going to double click to open up the smart filter. There it is. And adjust the scale slider to get rid of some of those gaps. Choose OK. And the image update. So that's looking good. Close, save, click OK, and switch back to Premiere. And there's my second shot. Drop it in the timeline. And you see it's been updated. Now there's a couple more things to look at really quick, and I just want to show you a few of those options. Over here in Photoshop, I've got a typical problem, and that is that our subject just doesn't fill the frame. Typical portrait aspect ratio, if I scale this up, it's going to start to chop into his face too much. But Photoshop offers a great tool called Content-Aware Scale. And you can either paint an alpha channel to define the protection zone, or if dealing with people, just click that little icon there to protect skin tones. And what happens is, is it'll do some facial recognition and allow you to stretch the image and resize. All right, we got one more image to process. Let's just take a quick look. There we go. And I just wanna do some quick fixes here. I'm gonna click Auto and lift up the shadowy areas. Really put some clarity in for some selective contrast and look at how that just pops the skin. Let's pull down those highlights, it's looking pretty good. And a little bit of vibrance to bring out the color and some saturation. I'm happy, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Or in this case, since I haven't placed it into Premiere, I could just click Done to store those settings. Now over in Premiere, if I make a new Photoshop file, I'll just navigate to my folder 
and store it. There we go. What you'll see is you could place that file in and all those settings you were starting to work on are still there. So it'll just come across and when you click OK, it adds it in. There we go. Let's just adjust that up. Shift and Option or Alt. Looks pretty good there. And I want to just do two quick fixes. Got this little blue shirt here I'm finding annoying, so I want to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to just duplicate this layer and then rasterize it so it's no longer a smart object. Down below, I still have the other layer if necessary. Let's zoom in here. And we're going to select that shirt. Quick selection tool is usually useful for things like that. There we go. And what I can do is expand that just a bit. And press Shift Delete to bring up the Content Aware Fill dialog. Click OK. Did a pretty good job analyzing those pixels. If I want to take manual control, I can go ahead and use the Patch tool, set it to Content Aware, and simply drag over here to define where it should select. And when you let go, you see that I actually did a better job of blending those things together. Let's do the same thing over here. I just want to take this pole out. I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool to select it, drawing over my image. There we go. Expand it a few pixels. And pressing Shift Delete will bring up the Content Aware Fill. Just choose Content Aware from the Use menu and click OK. And that did a pretty good job of analyzing those surrounding pixels and blending it together. So you see a lot of things you could do with Photoshop. And the great integration between these two apps just makes it absolutely seamless. As you work in one and jump over to the other, things just update. And that's really what's great about the Adobe Workflow.